Hello, everyone, and welcome to the March 14th, 2023 KCP community meeting. Uh, we have a, an issue for the topics today. Go ahead and check that. Okay. And um, if anybody is new to the meeting and would like to talk about what you're interested in using KCP for, I'll give you a moment. No. Okay. And just a reminder, please use the raise hand function uh, if you'd like to speak. So for the first topic, um, it looks like we have... Oh. Andy? Can't read the text. If you could new, uh, zoom in, please, Nolan. Yes, I will do Thanks. so. Better? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Uh, Franco, if you are here. Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, so do so you want me to talk about it? Um, so this is a, a, an issue that we are having uh, where we are trying to uh, run the syncer on a small device, in particular the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. On that NVIDIA Jetson Nano, we have MicroShift 4.8 running on uh, the Ubuntu uh, OS. Uh, that supports the uh, the GPU. Uh, we try to follow uh, the steps uh, of you know in the basic uh, uh, easy, easy quick start. So we uh, enter a workspace and we created uh, the Syncer YAML. Uh, we can successfully run the YAML on the MicroShift uh, P cluster. But when we go and bind, uh, we get an error uh, where the binding is not taking place. And it comes back uh, with an error that you can see at the very top that says that, that uh, the binding API cannot bind to uh, Kubernetes. So uh, since then, uh, we have been uh, uh, chatting with uh, David on the Slack channel. He gave us some suggestions. So, a new command uh, to run, but that is also failing. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I, I think we, we should maybe after the community caller, um, I had to leave for, you know, half an hour just before, but maybe we, we should look into why the, the command I proposed, you know, to import the resources from the physical cluster did not work because that, I mean, that's, Obviously, there is something uh, wrong here that should work, but but I agree that it's not the you know it's it's a, um, a way to bypass the problem. The main problem is that you know the physical cluster the the um, Kubernetes version of the physical cluster is not compatible with the root compute uh, APIs, and that raises obviously the. I mean, to fix it correctly, that raises the more general question of how do we support uh, different cube versions in the root compute? So the, 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 there is, uh, you know, two aspects uh, on the issue. For the the one of the last command, I would, you know, uh, come back to you to troubleshoot that afterwards if you want. Andy? Okay, so perhaps I can mention a couple of things. So unfortunately, this was supposed to be part of uh, the POC that we're doing for Edge uh, sure. MC. Uh, and we were planning to use the Jetson Nano because we use the same. We wanted to run basically the same examples that we had uh, demonstrated using another, uh, uh, you know, workflow. So wanted to be as similar as possible. Uh, MicroShift uh, four point eight. It is my understanding is the latest version that can run on Ubuntu, and unfortunately, Rail uh, for Edge does not support does not support the GPU on the Jetson Nano. That's why we are stuck uh, with what we have. Um, yeah. And and by the way, the, the last command that I 
proposed to you maybe i i mean i could have made a, a mistake in 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 the command as i pasted it or something like that so we just have to understand why it doesn't work in your case or maybe there is a step that is not applied uh, i would i would i mean uh, turn you back after yes we can talk time. offline uh, yes. the, uh, you keep saying that it's pulling in the resource from the physical cluster but we are not running in the sinker yet because we don't have the yaml yet on the physical yeah, cluster. that's I mean, the part that confuses me yes but but that's not expected i mean normally uh, even when you want to when you have some resources that you import it from import from the physical cluster uh, the workload sync command should work uh, uh, up to the end and you should be able to have the yaml to apply and start the sinker so i mean obviously there is one step which is you know not done as expected or maybe i did a copy paste or, or something like that so we have just to troubleshoot that but this approach works uh today uh, and this should be the short term i assume at least it could be a short term solution to bypass the problem and the long term obviously is answering the question of how we manage different cube versions in the in the cube releases in the in the root compute that, does it make sense i mean but just ping me afterwards and and we can continue okay thank you thank you very much for your time you, you're welcome Thank you, Franco. Andy, you had your hand up and put it down. You good? Okay. All right. Uh, let's head back to the agenda. Um, Mangiris, hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, I have questions about 2869. Yes, yeah, sorry. I was thinking I will not be able to make it, but I did it. So there was an open issue to split package client into separate go module so people could use client without rendering half of the world from kcp but we merged it it's done and basically the side effect of that is now that each and every time you change an api or change a generation you can't basically have a conflict because client is a child module which does not use replace, but is bound, bound to specific version of API. This means it's kind of complicates the development process. And there's a Slack chat. This was already raised. And we're thinking what to do next with this. And I am wondering if your suggestion to combine the APIs and client into a single repo would probably would be the best approach here. And I know that Kubernetes, for example, doesn't do that, but they have the staging repository set up, which I would love to avoid if we can avoid it. And it generally doesn't make sense to use a generated client without the APIs. I can see using the APIs without the generated client, though. So, uh, I, you know, there's there's maybe a reason not to put them together. But if you're pulling in the APIs and you happen to get a client set that you don't use because you're using controller runtime, it's maybe not the end of the world. Yeah. Stu? um so could we run through like what the actual um inconsistency or breakage is is it just for so, folks that are trying to use things from main no so if you try to if you try to basically add net something new to the api one use case would be and you try to immediately use it via generated client you can't because client became module of its own and it does not have the replace dash package APIs in it, but it is bound to the version 011, for example. Aren't so the you client supposed does to be using a Go work locally with the replace in there, though? Locally would be fine. Uh, it's it's more of an administrative challenge uh, once it gets into the repo. So you would have to merge a PR just for the API change, tag in Git a new version that includes that API change, then do another PR to the client uh, package 
to update its Go mod to point at the just tagged API release, and then you can generate the new or updated clients. And this is, but I guess, and so this is my question. This is just for release branches, right? Um, like we don't support anyone running off of main. Go run in the tests, I think would have the same issues if you want. No, to but like something. in any local scenario, we must have go work. Like that is the understanding, right? But I, I think, think it's not required mandatory. It's like you can run it without it. But I think it's a good practice not to start having it. Well, the, the repo needs to be self-contained for what's checked into the branch, which any way we go will be because it has to pass CI. The uh, For local development, if, if I think it's reasonable to say if you're changing the API and you want to update the client, you must use a go work. Um, so the question is really like, do we want to keep them as separate modules and deal with the release shenanigans that we'd have to do? Or do we want to try and make the whole thing easier? Yeah, and I, I guess I was just trying to understand the implication of like the actual shenanigans. And it, it, to me, at least it sounds like when we cut a release, it just ends up being two steps. Or we don't run CI on it. <laughs> Well, we'd, um, I think anytime we do a new, or anytime we change the API module, we generally need to tag it incrementally. So, you know, 1201, 1202, 1203, and so on. Um, because otherwise, there's no way that the client module can use them. And this is why I was thinking about potential API and client into one single Go module. Because we don't have a lot of dependencies together. It should be easy to end up for external project. And in the long run, long, long run, we can split a client to separate repository, basically, and iterate on it individually, separately. I mean, if the, cl the client's like, derivative entirely from the API, like auto-generated. So I don't know that that's super useful. Um, yeah, I mean, putting them together, it, there's no impact to consumers, right? Uh, we just have to look at the, the Go mod dependencies and see if there's anything that you wouldn't want if you were only pulling in the APIs. But I guess it would be, but it would potentially muddy up your Go mod, but it's not like it's going to link to your binary or anything. Sorry, say that again. Like if uh, so, if I'm a consumer today and I, I'm using the generic client in control runtime or something, and I only want to pull in the APIs with this change, if I then also pull in the client, the only impact to project is a more complicated Go mod. It's not like any change to my built artifacts or anything like that. Yeah, presumably because controller runtime uses a client Go, like pulling in uh, a KCP SDK module that has the APIs in the client. It's, you know, maybe, maybe we have something extra in there, but I mean, our direct requirements are our API machinery repo, our client Go repo, our APIs module, our logical cluster, and then Kubernetes API machinery and client Go. Like for direct requirements, it's pretty minimal. Yeah. That yeah, seems reasonable. And so is the consensus that we're trying to merge those together and have a one go module? Yeah, because the only other option we'd have is some sort of staging thing, right? And that's like a or larger way. See how it can place out the go workspaces all around the stack, around the place, which I don't think it's gonna I suspect it will involve more bash and make file hacking around the place, all around the place, make it working in every corner. 
than this one. Yeah, everyone's favorite. Yeah, probably not a great idea. OK, I um, can take this one up because I basically <laughs> introduced it. And for thing, Antonin, if, if you could now just stage up your things while I do the stuff, like API separately, so and block you. And I will try to start the mess in the next few days in a PR or something like that. OK, sounds like we have next steps there. Um, the next topic, it looks like Mike's not able to make it today. So um, Andy, uh, you can speak to the Kubernetes release. Yeah, uh, so I know Mike put in here rebasing onto 125 and 126. We're going to skip 125 uh, to <laughs> minimize toil and just rebase onto 126. I, about 20 minutes ago, did the first step, which is creating the spreadsheet that lists all the commits that we have so I can start to see if it makes sense to collapse any or drop any and then uh i'm going to start working on it now uh i'm out next week so <laughs> i doubt i'll get this done by friday but i'll at least get it started this week okay sorry mike Audio cut out. Um, do we want to talk about the next KCP release before we look at the playground plugin? Um, I know we've talked a little bit about what we want to put in, but I don't know if we've talked about it in the community meeting. Stefan, Andy, Steve. Uh, I mean, right now, the milestone only has reverse permission claims in it. And okay. that was on purpose so that we didn't just keep punting from one milestone to the next. So there are over 300 issues that are currently open. Um, so I think it's up to us as a community to decide what major feature or features we want to try and work on for 0 0.12. Uh, sometime in the distant past, we used to do a release per month. Do we have an idea that we want to get back to that cadence? Like, is this next one, would we like to bring it down at the end of the month? Um, I, I don't know how much has gone into the main branch since our last release. I'm not opposed to trying to do one at the end of the month, if it makes sense. Um, or we could try and do it sometime in April. Okay. And do we, and maybe Mike can speak to this. Do we have an idea if, um, the rebase is going to bring us like things that we really need? Should that be in there? Uh, I have not looked I, I, that's another part of the rebase steps is to look at the packages that make up generic control plane from the their sources and see mm -hmm. what the dips were between 124 and 126. And then uh, I know that there's things that are in the main branch that didn't make it into 126 because they came in after that would be nice to have. Um, the contextual logging changes for the quota and garbage collection controllers would mean that we generally either don't have to carry patches or the patches get a lot smaller, um, but that's not in. I could try to backboard them, that might help. And uh, I know that like, yeah, I, I have to check. So I, I don't know off the top of my head. It doesn't look like anyone from Edge MC is here to comment on whether or not that gets them features. Maybe let's open a, a, a discussion for nominating things to go into the next release, and then we'll figure out if the timeline for the month looks reasonable. Sounds good. Uh, I will do that. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, and then let's look at this playground plugin. I don't know if Mike made a comment in here. Go ahead, Stefan. Yeah, I commented there. Basically, there's lots of YAML inside, and this will break eventually. So if we want that, I think we need some kind of test. And some of the YAML is, I think, documentation, how to write another playground. This should be externalized into another file, which we also test, I think. That's my only precondition to move, uh, to move forward with that. If it's useful for people, sure, let's merge it. But with tests. Yeah. yeah. It looks like Mike has some questions for Fabrizio. Possibly, um, but I don't think Fabrizio is here. So I'm not sure what more we can do to answer this question for the moment. Um, and then finally, interface for identifying associated objects for upsync. Uh, does anyone have context on that? I'm gonna guess that it has to do with if you if you're up syncing a pod and the pod has a config map that's a volume mount like maybe you need to upsync that but i don't really have much context. i mean i sorry uh, maybe just just one point here uh, probably it's even uh, you know um not that complicated um currently the resource types that can be upsynced is uh, fixed and hard coded into the sinker so there is not not even um, um you know a customization way uh, or you know a declarative way to define that we want to add some new resource types to be upsynced and so that's the first level of, of uh, you know, being able to drive the, uh, what, what the object types uh, should be absinced. And then the second level is the one requested by, I think, Paolo several times, uh, which is um, decide what to absinct at the instance level. And especially if, if the, uh, I think IBM want, or some contributors wanted to absinct some secrets, for example, from downstream to, to upstream. So, I mean, there we, the, I mean, everything is to, to be built here uh, in terms of how do we want to drive that? How do we want to protect that as well to avoid leaking, uh, you know, uh, critical informations from downstream to upstream? So, I mean, it seems to me that there, there is a full design here to, uh, to invest uh, in before being able to, you know, have this landing in, in, in some release. For now, upsyncing is really, really just hard coded for the very minimal use cases that were requested until now which is upsyncing pods upsyncing endpoints and possibly upsyncing i mean soon um pvs for you know storage movement but that was very low level and and standard cube related hard coded into the sinker so the whole point of you know making that uh customizable or extendable is is you know an issue per se. Does it make sense? Thanks. Okay. Um, Stefan, uh, you had some discussion about the awesome and an awesome KCP repo. That uh, idea from William is not here. So to have a sub repository, I guess other projects have that. Basically, a, a readme file where you can add new links to whatever blogs, videos, YouTube's. Yeah, I've seen other projects also list like these are things that use it, or here's other use cases, um, things that use it as a dependency. That sort of thing. And I guess without much uh, curating, so it's really just a, a raw 
list. When something new, new comes out and you want to list it there, just make a PR. No judgment about what it is and so on. Go ahead, Andy. Uh, I also, in addition to making that repo, I just made a friends repo. And uh, we had talked about this. I don't remember if it was at a community meeting or on Slack or somewhere, but uh, other uh, other repos have a, a friends repo where folks can come in and uh, say who they are and how they're using the project. So I think that would be a cool thing to do as well. Uh, I'll put together readmes or if, if somebody wants to get to them before I do for these two re uh, new repos, that'd be cool. Thanks. What's the difference between these two then? Uh, friends would be how people are using KCP and uh, awesome would be a collection of demos, blog posts, videos, talks, et cetera. We could combine them into one, but um, I don't know. Y'all can tell me what makes more sense. Do you have an example of a friends repo? Yeah, um, Six Store has one. You want to look at Six Store slash friends. Dash Store. No, just one word, Six Store. And I would say, you know, you could just pick any one of the ones in there at random and just open up, um, you know, so people can see what one of these looks like. You know, it's it's not a lot, uh, or it doesn't have to be a lot. It's just uh, one or more short sentences about how they're using Tecton or SigStore or whatever. Yeah, and other projects we've used, like an issue or a discussion. I don't really have a preference for the format it comes in. OK, cool. Well, those are out there for now. We'll, uh, we can get some readmes and maybe some templates put in, small templates. Um, all right, we have 29 minutes left on the agenda. Does anyone have anything they last minute they didn't put in the issue that they'd like to bring up before we go to triaging okay and we will move on to triage there's not a whole lot um yeah so the flakes uh, just go into next yeah Um, this is part of an epic. Uh, David, is this going to be future work for next? Uh, yes, future. Uh, you probably yeah. You can put that in next. Okay. Um, this seems. Seems good so, to have. Yeah, this was an idea from Lionel. I remember he mentioned that in a discussion. Um, yeah, sorry, maybe Steve. Go ahead, Steve. Um, so at some point in the very distant past, I had run uh, at least like the API machinery conformance tests against KCP. Uh, there's a lot of like 
code in there that looks at nodes and dumps data and expects this and that, and I don't know. Hmm. This might be a very frustrating process, I guess, is where I'm going. A bunch of them start like pods and whatnot, which I think we'd have to be careful about how we structure this to make it actually useful to us and not like a huge time sink for gluing two things together. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Sonobuoy has facilities for tagging which tests to run, but it's, yeah, it's relying on nodes and a lot of fundamental stuff that we may not even be there yet. Yeah, it was less so like skip these tests because they have to do with nodes and more so like every test assumed the, they were there. Yeah, the EDE yeah. framework falls over because the node API doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay. Maybe, maybe we can we can uh, comment that in the in the issue and, and let the discussion yeah, start. I'll put it in there. Obviously that's not something uh, short term and, yeah. and the priority. Okay, uh, bug we just discussed, and um, you this one, yeah. yeah, and you've got that. So I think that's everything. Uh, final call for topics. Otherwise, we can have a few minutes back. All right. Well, have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thanks for your attendance. Thanks. Bye.